What a match Ellery Hanley had at Wembley. The king of Great Britain Rugby League. The reception here will be enormous. Unbelievable reception for these guys. Heroes at Wembley. They will become something of godlike if they can win the Ashes at Old Trafford. Paul Dixon at the back. He drops back into the second row from front row at Wembley. And this atmosphere is as good as anything I've ever seen. This ground that is so famous for one of the greatest soccer teams in the world. Legendary Manchester United playing host to Rugby League. And Hanley firing up his side. It is going to be very close. The referee who took such a big part in the first half, Mr. Elaine Sablero of France. The Australians far from happy with his performance at Wembley. He penalised the Australians 8-1 to one offside in the ruck area. That was vital. And now the Australians link up to get together for the national anthems. Mal Meninga saying that we don't get any more chances after this one. This is where we start to keep the series alive. We stand by for both anthems. determination from 26 footballers trying to win the greatest prize of all the ashes as the band departs I just wonder what is going through the minds of the skippers Mal Meninga, Ellery Hanley both those guys are making their way to midfield for the toss well of course they're both very experienced men Meninga having captain Canberra to two successive grand final victories Hanley, well, he's done it all with Wigan. And he had an outstanding game in that first match at Wembley, as you said, Graham. Quite astonishing, considering how little football he's played. But today, Australia will be more than keen to make sure that the decider is at Leeds. And one man, of course, who knows all about captaining sides, Tony Durkin, I think has joined you on the sideline, Wally Lewis. Well, Wally, I suppose it'd be silly to say you'd love to be out there. You've been in town a day only. Have you had an opportunity to talk to the boys? Yeah, I've had an opportunity just to talk to them uh, very briefly. I'm sure anybody would love to be out there. They're in a, a perfect situation uh, to become heroes. Each and every bloke out there, one nil down in the series, and everything's against them at the moment. We've got a few injuries as well, but I think we've got the, tet and uh, the uh, depth and talent to be able to, to really uh, put it to the English today. They're ready to win. I think so. They're in a very determined mood. I've uh, just had a look at them coming outside the dressing rooms there, and uh, they mean business today. Wally, I think most people would wish you all the best uh, in recovery from that arm, and uh, let's hope that you're back with us soon. Thanks very much, Tony. 
Mal Meninga now gets set for the kickoff. This is it. On the line, the Ashes, Meninga. Great Britain with the first touch, Hampson. He unloads for Betts, who played well at Wembley. Brought down by Mackay Low, Lindner over the top. Ten metres out from their own line. Dixon. There'll be some slipping early on. The handling might be a little difficult. As I said, we've had plenty of rain before the kickoff. Schofield immediately with the kick, and he kicks so well in the first test. He starts here magnificently, one hop over the sideline to get Great Britain out of trouble and send Australia 40 metres out from their own line. Stewart just checking some calls from Lyons out wide. Australia with possession. Lyons. So many people think that his performance is the key to this test. He's up against one of the best in Schofield. Lindner, what a match he had in the first test. Strong running, but strong defence from Betts and also Dixon. Elias. Great Britain caught inside the five. That is ironic. After Australia were hammered in that area in the opening moments of the first test. Stewart to look for touches, the Australians regroup. He just checks with Meninga what the call is once they find touch. And Stewart. Elias will restart. The Australians had a conference midweek via a telephone hookup with the French referee, Lazarus, playing with those 17 stitches in that forehead cut. Roach, head down. 12 metres out, the Australians. First side with a real opportunity. Sirenen on the blind side. He just left into the tackle. Taken. Now Stewart. Lazarus again looking for some more work. He brushed aside Betts as the Australians keen right from the start. He's had his headgear ripped off. Lyons. Lyons looking for Meninga. Meninga pushed a pass for Belcher. Crowd calling for a knock-on. Last tackle. Daly with a big bomb. This will come down about 10 metres out. Hansen injured himself as he set to jump up for the ball. But Powell was the man that... It comes to stray. Anxious moments for Great Britain. Martin Afire put down by Sirenen. They're looking a little bit bustled. There's a penalty gone in against the Australians. Hanley has a lot to say to Elias. Former teammates at Balmain. And Benny would have had a bit to say to Hanley, no doubt. He's all fired up now that he's got a test jumper back. Eastwood. He'll be lucky he won't get outside the 22. So the Australians to keep them here and to keep the pressure on them. Jackson. For Harrison. Roach and Lazarus let him know they're about. Dixon. Running without support but running strongly. The crowd love that. Betts. Betts taken by Roach. Good determined play from Great Britain. They get out near halfway. Schofield on the blind. He drives it low. But the referee has the Australians inside the five. Determinhausen in Old Trafford this afternoon. Andy Platt. Taken well by Lazarus, who's been busy in the first four or five minutes. Gregory, Betts. Good defence from the Australians. Hanley has stayed blindside with Schofield. Now Schofield takes over, throws the dummy. Can't shake Siren and clear. To his feet, Gregory wants it. Looking for Hanley. Going backwards. They still can't stay inside the Australian quarter. Schofield. He's going to go for one. He didn't meet it the way he wanted, and it goes wide. So he just wanted to break the early pressure. But the kick 
went wide and it's nil all Australia Great Britain as Australia start again and now they've got a penalty well I hope he keeps being consistent all day but I hope he keeps the pee out of the whistle and gee great defense from Mackay Hanley Hanley back to halfway Cyril misses him Hanley great run great run from Hanley Elias six to go as he tucked it and now Roach lets Hanley have one on the back play there was nothing in it but the touch judge had to come in 30 meters away Great Britain Gregory back on the inside the ball's loose I think the Australians are responding to it well there, David. They were under a lot, lot of pressure just then. A couple of great runs by Ellery in particular, but they've come out well, and uh, I think they're looking better at this stage of the game than what they were in the first test. A kick from Elias deep down inside Great Britain's territory. A fire chased by Daly. Daly meets him and throws him into the turf. Gee, that'll give Daly some confidence. A fire couldn't get away from him. Elias comes at Hanson. He can't get away from the second line. Bobby Linder starting as strongly as he played the entire 80 minutes at Wembley. Great Britain bring it out through Platt. 13 metres out from his own line. Still nil all here at Old Trafford. Capacity crowd. Schofield again kicking. And getting back as Belcher. Plenty of open territory in front for Belcher to return the kick. Brings it back to the halfway. Good defence beats him from Great Britain. Elias, nothing wrong with hand, this Daly's hand there, Meninga, met well in defence there by Gregory and also Harrison. Mackay from dummy half, Lazarus, good run from Lazarus. Penalty against Great Britain. Shearer it was who played it, Stewart, here's Mackay coming down the centre. Just 15 metres away from Great Britain's line. The referee telling the Great Britain players to get back on side. Roach down the centre. Surinan lost the ball as he knocked Mackay clean out of the road. A mix-up in the Australian runners. And Great Britain come up in possession. Six to go, says the referee. Betts standing out amongst the centres. Claimed out there. Loses the ball, but the referee will penalise Lyons for punching it clear. Well, Lyons is confident anyway. Dummies to Hanley, picks up Harrison. He started well. Schofield, involved in everything, as is Gregory and Hanley. Dixon with a strong run. His form has really lifted since Wembley. Gregory, Gregory sights a gap up the middle. Stewart was back in cover, and there was a big hole there, close to the play of the ball. Schofield, Hanley. Just straight into the defence. Sirenen with a strong tackle. Hampson up in the front line from fullback on the last tackle. Schofield. Trapped by Belcher. He gets up and he will play at five metres out from his own line. With a great tackle. The Australians right back at their own in goal. Mackay, a crossfield, taken by Hanley. This is real pressure. This is real test football. Roach with a good ball. Meninga quickly. Shearer. 
Shearer stops. Great start. Schofield's there. Good tackle. But fine play from the Australians to break away. Now, line deep to the right. Elias. Belcher. Belcher trying to link up with Daly. He can't get it to him. And he's taken by Gibson. One more tackle for the Kangaroos. Gregory's back there. He allows the ball to bounce. Gregory will let it go and run five metres out from the Great Britain line. They've nearly gone the length of the field, the Australians, much to the joy of their supporters. This scrum will go down, and Great Britain taking their time to make sure that this one packs. They've been turned around, and Gregory showed just how tired they are. No, I haven't. Schofield. Taken 10 metres out. Hampson. Running clear, now dragged down by Lyons. Now somebody lashed out with a boot. There was a roar from the crowd. No touch judge in on the play. We see Hanley taken. Lyons is down. Interesting point about being very involved Wally Lewis but he tends to run one way on the football field yes that's right uh, one thing Australia have got to do is we see Great Britain look very dangerous well we'll come back as Gibson Gibson to the outside as Stewart they come away on the break a fire gets it away to Schofield on the last tackle and this will be down for Belcher so it is tit for tat both sides letting each other know that they're prepared to play it in the 22s Australia looking for a quick restart. Elias calling for the ball, but he's got some tired forwards, so Daly is going to have to hit it up, and he's crunched by Harrison. Yes, as I was saying, Graham, Hanley is, is basically a right field runner. When I say that, I mean he runs to his right hand side all of the time because he's got a very strong left hand fend. He's nowhere near as effective when he runs to the left hand side of the park because he carries the ball on that right hand side and cannot get a fend away. And 99 times out of 100, when he runs to the left-hand side, you see him tackle very, very easily. So I think Australia's just got to put a little bit more concentration into their defence. Well, here's the error that Great Britain have been looking for. Both sides have been looking for a fumble. Now Great Britain were in set. Betts, he tries to straighten play up. Good tackle from Lidner. Jackson, who ran well and backed up well at Wembley. Gregory into dummy half. Schofield. Harrison off him. He's got support in Schofield. He steps. Long ball out. Hanley. Here's the chance. Powell. Back for Schofield. Schofield inside one. That's touched. Should be six more tackles. Eastwood head down. The Australians touched it, but the referee hasn't called it. Gregory. Gregory. No support inside. He goes to Platt. His Wigan teammate, last tackle. They should have had six more. Betts, charged down. Now they've got six. Here is real danger for Australia. Great tackle, Daly. There has been some terrific attack, but great defence from both sides at both ends. Powell, Daly, this time he missed. Schofield, Hanley and Gregory calling all the shots. Schofield, dummies. Steps. Great passing. Oh, that was unbelievable. That is a great try. No, no try. Oh, that was brilliant play from Schofield. But Dixon couldn't get it down. Schofield created a great pass. But to no avail. Just watch the skills of Schofield as he beats Lazarus, then gets around the back of Lyons. Great defence from Belcher. And also, great defence to get under the man. Steve Roach. Roach, tremendous stuff from the big man. He really did well then, Steve Roach. And Stewart did well in the end to fall on that ball and get under the swinging arm of Andy Gregory. So Australia having to soak up the pressure as Mackay runs away from dummy half. Good run from Brad Mackay. It's still Australia nil, Great Britain nil. 15 minutes gone in this second test match as Lazarus comes out towards the quarter line. 
Elias. Sheridan. Jackson did well to take him low. Betts finished him up. Comes back to Stewart. Stewart thought about the kick. He puts a left footer that really looked awkward coming off the boot. Eastwood it is. But surely that must be a Shepherd. Surely that is a Shepherd. Stewart was coming through to tackle him. He ran back round Schofield and impeded Stewart's progress. Surely that must be obstruction. As Great Britain bring it 10 metres back inside Australia's territory. Jackson. Gregory. Down the centre comes Harrison. Harrison almost to the corner line as he got through Lazarus's tackle. 30 metres out, Great Britain. Gregory. Here's Hanley back down the centre, but meeting him ball and all was Mackay. 20 metres away from Australia's line. Australia really having to soak up the early pressure. Schofield, Betts. 18 metres out. Last tackle against Great Britain. Schofield in a dummy half. Will he have a shot at field goal from there? The bad pass. But come out now to Hanley, who hoists it high. Taking it brilliantly, though, is Belcher. Absolutely outstanding again. Gary Belcher under an enormous amount of pressure as Shearer runs it away from dummy half. Super take that one from Belcher. As the Australians have to steady things down, and I'm quite certain Lazarus wasn't expecting that, but he did well enough to take it and go ahead another few metres. Lyndon was powering up on the blind side. This is a real tough call for the forwards, Dave, because they've had to handle and soak up so much pressure. That's good play to get it out of the 22. Elias spotting the opening from dummy half as Meninga gets it away to Stewart, and Stewart gets his kick in, and it looks beautiful off the boot. One bounce, two bounces, and finds touch just 18 metres out from Great Britain's line. Now, that will take a lot of pressure off. Uh, of course, when the first test, he was, he was down the sideline, that's right. But, uh, yes, he did come down a couple of moments ago, sent a message out to the trainer, who immediately went onto the field. But, boy, oh, boy, he couldn't be too disappointed in the way Great Britain have started. They are red hot. Great Britain 11 metres away. Powell, Gibson, and great defence again. Gee, Bobby Linder's covering every blade of grass on this football field at the moment. As Betts goes from dummy half, runs into Lazarus, and Mackay is there as well. 20 metres away from Great Britain's line. How Australia would dearly love to see a Great Britain mistake here as Platt gets it just outside the quarter line. Open side come Great Britain. Gregory to kick. Shearer getting back. He's picked the gap between Shearer and also Belcher. It'll be Belcher's ball as it sits up well for Belcher. Shearer comes with him. Belcher goes straight ahead. Couldn't get the pass away to Daly who was in support. Daly decides to dash up the blind side. Shearer inside Great Britain's territory who crashes through Powell and it's only good defence from Hampson who brings him to the ground as Belcher runs straight across field he's looking for Lyons in support Lyons comes back on this side of the field back to Shearer Shearer goes straight down the centre a high but effective tackle quickly to his feet Shearer Elias looking for runners everybody had overrun the ball he ducks but he can't beat Harrison frantic play Roach, Roach with a bit of room. Roach trying to get it back on the inside. Stewart was tackled before the ball came to him. That should have been a penalty. Last tackle. Lyons trying to wait that to the end goal. Charge down. Now there's six more. Belcher. Australia had to handle this. Now it is Great Britain. Mackay. Mackay. No one on his outside. Anxious Australian bench looks on. Stewart. Lindner. At the feet of Meninga. Great chance. If Betts had have passed that straight away, there was an open field for a, firstly Gibson and a fire. Jackson. Gregory. Short blind side. He's got a fire. Dummies. Now. Great tackle. Gibson was hammered there by Meninga. A fire driven backwards by Lazarus. Great start to this second test. Great opening first half. All the kicking's been good, the attack's been good, and the defense has been great. Both sides really are handling their game plans well and putting pressure on. The crowd must surely have enjoyed this opening. 22 minutes or so. 
And I was saying, Graham, that both sides really are handling the game plans terrifically. They certainly are, Graham. I think, uh, obviously, Great, Great Britain, I think, feel that if they can contain Australia for the first 25, 30 minutes, just the emotion of the crowd, the support of the crowd, will really uh, inspire them on to uh, make things extra tough for Australia. They've done it so far for about 22 or 23 minutes. Roach. They must be tired, both sides. Elias. Eddinghausen off the other wing. His first touch. Right on halfway. Stewart. Lions wide. Lindner on the inside. They're trying to catch Great Britain out with inside passes because their defence, instead of moving up, tends to slide across the field. Lions. Great pass to Stewart. Daly. Good ball. Great chance here. Shearer. Shearer will get there. Great try. That was a terrific pass from Lions to start it. In defence of the Ashes, the Australians get the first try. Dale Shearer back in test football a four-pointer. The first ones to crack a Great Britain. And that sends the Australian fans alight. Good over-the-top play on the Just Jeans replay from Daly. There was an option here for Shearer to go outside. Schofield had to hope that Hanley would get there, but he couldn't. And Shearer crashes through. All Schofield could do was to look outside to Eddinghausen. But Shearer just put the foot on the accelerator and Hanley couldn't get across there. But it was a good short ball from Lyons in the first instance. And that ball put Stewart halfway through a gap and he kept it alive. Good camera connection from Stewart and Daly. And Shearer on this tour will have no better confidence booster than that one. That'll give the Australians heart. Graham Lowe said they wanted to keep them scoreless for 25. They just couldn't do it by about a minute or so. The skipper Meninga now, about 10 metres in from touch. A packed old Trafford will do their best to put him off. He hasn't been happy with his kicking on this tour. And he sprayed this one. Way out to the right. But the Australians lead in the second test, four points to nil. As Great Britain bring it back to the halfway for the restart. They're behind on the scoreboard, four points to nil as Schofield restarts. It comes off Elias's legs and he did well to get back there and pounce on it before he was really sent cartwheeling over his back by Gregory. Surinam down the centre, taken again by Gregory and Hanley. Elias, Lazarus. Good run from Lazarus, good defence there from Betts and also Harrison. Open side Elias, Stewart, Lyons. He's got Belcher on the inside. Belcher almost to the halfway, just couldn't get the pass away. Lyons on his inside. And Lindner just had one Great Britain player blocking the passage to the outside. Stewart kicking deep, looking for the gap between Afire and Hampson. Eddinghausen's down there. Now Lyons has gone up quickly and so too has Stewart and Meninga. And Great Britain are trapped only eight metres out from their own line. Hampson from dummy half. Lyons, good tackle. Well, he's got through the first 25 minutes, Cliffy Lyons which would really settle his nerves down, even more so that Australia are leading 4-0 as Gibson. Gets the penalty for the high tackle. I think he's more suggesting that perhaps Roach pulled him by the hair in the end. So Great Britain threw Eastwood to kick for touch. And here it is again, Roach and Surinan, the defenders. Well, Surinan seemed to take him a fraction high. But this, at this stage, the referee hasn't awarded the penalty. As you can see, he's still quite prepared to go on. The last indication, perhaps, was pulling of the hair against Roach. Down the centre, Harrison runs into Surinan, Lazarus and Roach. Just inside Australia's territory. Open side, Schofield. Betts. Linda's there and Elias. Right in centre field. Gregory. Gregory finds Schofield, across field comes Schofield, but Lyons is there and so too is Mackay. There's no passage wide this time. 
Jackson. Gregory. Kicks to Eddinghausen's wing. But it sits up well for Belcher. Belcher runs it back. A fire's there. So too is Hanley. He runs into Harrison in the end. And also Platt on the Australian quarter line. A furious start to this second test. As Eddinghausen comes in off the wing to take a bit of pressure off the forwards. Good play from Eddinghausen as he pinched an easy 10 metres. Elias. Roach. Roach straight down the centre. Pops it back up for Lyons. Back to Elias. Elias to the halfway line. Good confident handling from the Australians. Elias plays it forward. No marker. Now, Lyons. Stewart. Stewart throws the dummy. Back it comes out now to Elias. The crowd didn't like it, but the referee said play on. 30 metres away. Penalty against Great Britain right in front. Against... But an important kick about 10 minutes remaining in this first half. play with the dropout. Huge crowd here at Old Trafford. The dropout deep inside Australia's territory. Shearer, I should say, Belcher having two grabs at it as Eddinghausen came in quickly to add support and he's lost the football. And Great Britain come up with it on the halfway through Betts, who got through a couple of defenders before he's tackled eight metres inside Australia's territory. The crowd calling for Great Britain to head back. Ten minutes away from the break. Hanson, back on the inside. Now, back to where he was. Desperate stuff. Manley, Gregory, looking for runners. Powell had to stop to the outside of Daly. He drags him, that's a penalty. Well, the touch judge never called it. The touch judge said, if I had to put my flag up, it would have been to come in and get a penalty. Harrison, he's taken the Australian forwards on in the middle very well. This will go against Sirenen, who gave Harrison a bit of a facial in the play of the ball. He'll call out Sirenen. Just a warning for him. Now the penalty that might give them a chance at some points. You'll see Siren had come over the top, looking to maybe get square here for something earlier, and he just gives him a bit of a massage. Not the massage that you would like. 5-4 Great Britain have the penalties now. Really looking grim and determined. His team are the same way in this first half nothing in this second test. Taking plenty of time. As a little bit of sun tries to peek through here. It's coming around nicely. Fine goal. And the crowd jump to their feet as Great Britain get back within two. back to halfway what would your instructions be to Great Britain we've got about eight minutes to go Graham I think that uh, everything's going the way they would have hoped because uh, I know that they were desperate to try and stay within striking distance after 25 minutes they've been able to achieve this I wouldn't be surprised if we see them carry on trying to pick away at a few field goals in the last tackles Graham I get the feeling that they that Wembley match has just given them so much confidence they seem to have grown well, you know, this is a this is real test match football. This isn't the Great Britain side uh, of recent years, and it's certainly not the Great Britain players that have uh, been showing up in, in some of the club games. Belcher, good kicking from both sides. Belcher across the field, straightens. The Australians turn to get back deep into their own territory. Lidner, looking for a, a great run like he did at Wembley. That was important, this one as well. 40 out from their own line. 
Stewart. Stewart looking for support. Stewart. He just couldn't get it to Mackay. Hanley was there in time. Elias. A little bit more variation around the ruck. Off the angle of Lazarus. Back for Lidner. Lidner taken low by Platt. Every member out on the field digging as deep as possible. Meninga. Last tackle against the Kangaroos. Stewart inside for Eddinghausen to chip. Too deep for Hampson. Hampson! Hampson into the clear. Hampson still going. Great play from the Great Britain fullback. He gets a serve from Lyons. Struggles to his feet. Powell pleading with him to get up. The referee is going to penalise Shearer, but he was well within his rights. He's got to penalise Great Britain. They're the ones that made the mistake. He's got to get to his feet and play the ball properly. Shearer was absolutely within the rules. I can't believe that. Well, here it is again. Hampson got up. He put the ball on the ground. You'll see this now. Here's Lyons. He slams him into the ground. He has every right to do that. Now, Hampson gets up to play the ball. Now, immediately, he puts the ball on the ground. Shearer's allowed to strike for it. He was quite within his rights, and this French referee has done it again, shown his ineptitude. He has, does not know the rules of the game. Shearer was totally within his rights. Another re disgraceful refereeing decision. Penalty goes to Great Britain. The substitute probably can't fathom what the ruling is. Play the football. Opportunity to go on the attack right on half time. Gregory, that was a forward pass to Platt. As Platt has taken only 18 metres out from Australia's line. Jackson, Gregory. On the inside comes Harrison, who's taken there by Mackay and also Lindner. 18 metres away. Gregory, Schofield. decision made just a few moments ago when Shearer was quite ridiculously penalised. On the halfway, Surinan comes straight and hard. Australia leading Great Britain four points to two. Right on the stroke of half time as Lazarus brings it ahead. Ball security very important in these last few moments. Australia keen to have a good set of six and take it deep inside Great Britain's territory as the ball's gone loose. And that will be a knock-on, and the scrum will go down. But, gee, Platt almost plucked that out of the air, and that could have been dangerous for Australia. Stewart to feed the ball into the scrum. Just over 60 seconds remaining in the first half. Hanley not keen to give the ball to Stewart. Here it is again. As the pass came away to Stewart, Stewart keen to keep the ball alive, and Platt almost bringing off the miraculous intercept. Penalty. 
fact, he wants it to go in again. No, he has given the penalty. Well, your guess from there is as good as mine. Maybe it was against Stewart for not retiring. Dixon came from a long way back, but Lazarus was there to meet him just outside the quarter line. Harrison, Elias, takes him over the top. Underneath was Lazarus, 18 metres away. Gregory, Schofield, Gregory, Hanley, great tackle from Lyons. Lyons was waiting, and now Hanley, he kicked Stewart in the face, but he got straight up the level flag, he came to half-back Jackson, and a fire came flying through, but couldn't get it. And an injury now, 12 metres out from Australia's line. The referee asking for assistance as it was Jackson who's down injured but Australia be very keen to have the breather here and the referee saying that someone has to play the football well here's Jackson coming ahead and there he is tackled and then taken in the second tackle by Roach Elias was there as well as Platt is tackled in tackle number five Gregory Gregory goes on his own has a shot at field goal, and the ball goes dead. And so Australia, we won't even have time for Australia to restart the match. As the siren goes to indicate half-time, the whistle goes, and Australia lead Great Britain by four points to two. Try as against the penalty goal, and here come the Australians. Daly coming back out, with Lazarus and Surinam, an army of Australian supporters. Cliffy Lyons showing the wound there that where he seemed to get a poke in the eye early in the first half. The Australians back out. Shearer the try scorer. As Brian Hollis emerges from the tunnel, the Australian trainer. Mal Meninga, plenty on his mind. He knows that the next 40 minutes could well decide the fate of the Ashes. Australia must stay in front to take the series to Ellen Road. Ellery Hanley equally anxious to win this match so that there's no decider at Leeds. The Great Britain crowd, as Martin of Fire comes back out of the tunnel, will really urge this side on to what would be one of the greatest victories in the history of a rugby league. Let's go back down to the sideline. Tony Durkin, you've been into the dressing rooms. Uh, what's been said? First of all, David, no changes to either side for the second half. Bob Fulton's fairly happy with the situation. The three important uh, items that he did stress to his players were ball control, the, the fact that they are falling off some of their tackles, and also the fact that they're giving away far too many penalties. He also wants the team to step up the intensity of the game. He's disappointed that uh, the Australians are playing, or the game is being played at too slow a rate. Now, conversely, in the Great Britain side, now Australia believe that Great Britain are deliberately trying to slow the game down. That wasn't the message from the Great Britain dressing room. Malcolm really wants them to step up the intensity of the game as well. He also wants a better defence around the ruck area. He believes uh, he believes that Benny Elias is getting away with far too much ground. Here, very interesting that Mr Elaine Sablero has thrown the ball away at the Australian's request because Mal Meninga and Ben Elias saw that Ellery Hanley and Schofield had both come out with their knees coated in grease and they wiped the ball all over their knees as they did at the kickoff at Wembley. And the Australians are not prepared to play the first set of six with Greece all over the ball. Meninga has a good check of the ball. Mr. Sablero, a warning, don't do it again, he says to Hanley. So, after all the grimness of that first 40, a bit of a smile and something like, we've got a clean football. And 40 minutes left here at Old Trafford. There's going to be a lot of drama played out here before the Ashes are won or lost. Sirenen, right on the 22. Great Britain must be wondering, are they ever gonna get any closer to winning the Ashes? 31 years since they've won it at home, and they're only behind by the two. Lidner. <laughs> plays it back. Lazarus, earning his keep in this second test. A lot of work in the first 40. 
Stewart keeps it low. Bouncing for Eastwood. Eastwood ducks under Lyons. It is so often that the first five minutes after half time can be lethal to either side. I wonder if it's Australia or Great Britain that will come out and maybe be a little bit slow to get into top gear. Betts, the Great Britain bench, some stretching for Kevin Ward who came on in the first 10 after the break at Wembley. Platt, he's only had one full, ga full game in a month of football, so Ward might be out there for him. So, the kick down between Belcher and Shearer is a magnificent one. Schofield, fired up, says to his forwards, let's keep them here. Let's make them make the first mistake. The Australians have the scrums only just. And Great Britain, similarly the penalties. But some controversial ones again from Mr. Sablero. As the Englishman set up in song, and the Australian bets anxiously await the outcome of this set of six tackles. Daly. Mackay. Pitches courtesy of the BBC. The Australians trying to work it out of the 22. Lindner. Lindner strongly. Much better position for the Australians. Elias to kick. And kick well. A fire back there. He will cut it off. But a great line of defence from the Australians. Lazarus and Elias do the honours. Now England. Ten metres out. Hampson. Good head on defence from Eddinghausen. A searching time for both sides. Black. Strong run. It is hard to find anybody that hasn't played well in these two sides. Dixon, swinging arm from Mackay. 32 out from their own line in midfield. Gregory, he physically threw Hanley out of the dummy half roll. Gibson, Gibson, again Eddinghausen head on. Great defence, right on halfway, last tackle. Jackson, Jackson looking for somebody. Gregory. Was something more than the crowd is used to it. Old Trafford as Hampson just towed it ahead. Sloppy play from Great Britain. Stewart. Dummy to Sirenen. Now, this is where Graham Lowe and Wally Lewis said to go out wide. Over the top, picked up by Stewart. Now he's going to call that a knock on, is he? The Australians are stunned. Stewart especially. He was headed off down the touchline. I really believe that in matches of this importance, as we see an injury to a fire, he's gone over on his ankle and we just we see again on replay, watch for the pass from Meninga, straight through the hands of Eddinghausen, out the back. And they're going to have to address the administrators of both countries, the use of French referees in an Ashes series. I don't know why they couldn't have at least gone to a New Zealand referee. Maybe could have had an American. They know as much about the game as this bloke does. Lachlan is stretching sideline just in case that a fire can't continue. Now, maybe it is his knee as they do some tests, some ligament tests in a terrible lot of pain. He looks to be headed for the bench. Lachlan to come on. So they will lose plenty of pace on the wing. But plenty of... Now all of a sudden a fire has second thoughts or does he? So Lachlan is the specialist goalkeeper that will give them a second strength out there. Gibson goes to the wing and Lachlan into the centre. So there it is again. Now the ball came over the back. Now Eddinghausen did the ball go forward. Stewart came round and cleaned it up. 
Well, for mine, it wasn't a knock-on. Here's Lachlan, gets his first touch and Lyons greets him right round the legs. Didn't play for Australia. He had to pull out of the match, the first match of the tour when St. Helens were due to play or did play Australia. He actually twisted, went over on his ankle on a, virtually a cow paddock that they had to train on the day before. So Paul Lachlan finally gets his chance. And in fact, Gibson's moved to the wing as Ward gets ready to probably replace Platt. And Lachlan is taking his place in the centres, which is where he normally plays for St. Helens. Harrison, taken by Lyons around the legs. Getting through a lot of tackling as Lyons. Gregory wants to get a kick in, under a lot of pressure again. And now, Belcher bringing the ball back. And Hanley's there. Sideline, Tony Durgan, what's the matter with Martin Afire? Martin, the report from the Great Britain bench is that Martin Afire has damaged uh, ligaments in his right knee. Pretty serious, it looks pretty serious at this stage, and of course, that means Afire will also be out of the uh, witness a team which Australia plays next weekend. Lazarus, oh, what a good tackle that was from Platt. Well, I'm just about to take him off, and Platt met him with a beaut. Elias, Stewart, Cyril in a hole, Cyril! straight and hard good run from the big man got a bit of facial too from Lachlan in the end and though Australia can move it quickly there's a try on on this side of the field there's plenty of space as Lyons goes across field back down the centre comes Mackay Mackay still going to Belcher Belcher back it goes to Elias Elias on his own Elias will score or will he no only just short great football Australia he's been held something from the Great Britain skipper but I hope this doesn't lead to anybody leaving the field Benny Elias struck out with his foot but I think he took exception at the treatment he was getting to Daly, Australia score. Now, I don't know if they're going to carry on here to give us the look at this incident, they're not. Well, he's still on the field anyway. And Eastwood will take the pressure off Great Britain, but how near that was to an Australian try. to look for touch well graham surely this is where both sides have got too much to lose now they certainly have graham you know they've got to settle down it's all right increasing the intensity but uh that intensity has got to not be mixed up with emotion and at the moment there's a little bit a little bit too much strong emotion running high would you uh replace platt at the moment no i'd just leave everything as it is i wouldn't fit around with the side schofield schofield about 34 meters out midfield 
atmosphere electric at Old Trafford. A gripping test match. This has been a great test. Schofield, Schofield, the dummy. Hey, Dixon, Dixon's got support. Dixon will score. Dixon wasn't tackled. Dixon gets a try that throws the test. The Ashes, everything on the line. Oh, it's erupted here. Australia have let Dixon in, but it's that man Schofield. It is Gary Schofield again that has busted the line. Plenty of defence there, but Dixon, was he tackled in the end? Schofield had dummied inside and out. The Just G's replay, Stewart had to go in. Dixon into the hole. Now, both defenders had fallen off him. That's a try. No doubt about the try. None at all. Dixon, the two cameramen, Belcher and Meninga, series and it has certainly given the series an advantage to Great Britain just listen to the atmosphere here at Old Trafford they are saying here we go they're saying here we go and grab the ashes The performance from the Australians to come back now would be unbelievable. Eastwood. To try and give them just a little bit more breathing space. Everything is vital in the game. None more so than this, right at this time. He's hooked it. He's hooked it a long way. But it's Great Britain with their nose in front. 6-4 here at Old Trafford. And he moves. Strikes it well. He's given it a bit of height. Straight over the black dot. What a goal. Just look at the spin on that ball. a change. Kevin Ward is on, as you can see on screen. Now, he has replaced Carl Harrison, surprisingly, and not, as we thought, Andy Platt, who had not, uh, hasn't played for a month. And I've just been informed by the, my friends in the British camp that Kevin Ward was four years of age when Great Britain last won the Ashes. He's the only survivor from uh, that era that's out there at the moment. Four years of age, the only player who was born, in fact, when Great Britain last won the Ashes. Well... He was about the same as me, Tony. So now, Great Britain. They've got the crowd behind them. They've got a crowd that's going to try and get them to the line. It's going to need more than the crowd, though. Kevin Ward. Can he help carry this pack through the remaining minutes? There is a long time to go. Lachlan. Down to Andrew Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen to take on Dixon. He beats Dixon, but he can't beat the tackle of Gibson. I know it wouldn't that have been good if he could have got the pass to Meninga because Meninga would have been in plenty of open space. Lazarus, 10 metres inside Australia's territory. Stewart, Lindner. 40 metres away from Great Britain's line. Roach comes straight down the centre. Back to Elias. Stewart, quick hands to Lyons. Lyons at Crossfield. Oh, what a good fend that was. As Lyons gets it away to Mackay. Mackay finds a bit of space for Shearer. Shearer back at Crossfield. Out the back of it, picked up by Lyons again. Lyons on his own. Now Belcher. Belcher, good run. Elias. Frenetic stuff from Australia. Stewart throws the dummy. Meninga. And it comes down to Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen with pace. Eddinghausen kicks in field. And Stewart.
football. And Meninga, who threw the pass to Eddinghausen, but created that last little bit of space, gets the chance to add the extras. What a try! Meninga, it's there! Two points! Australia back in front by four! And it's Australia 12 by six points now over Great Britain six. Australia will win maybe that prophecy will come true but they're only in front by four points at the moment and Gibson almost had to stop in his tracks to get that ball and met suddenly great defense by Mackay just outside Great Britain's line a good six needed here by Australia Ward comes up and Linda and Lazarus and so too was Lyons there Lyons probably had a bit to say to his formerly, former manly teammate as well. Platt, Lazarus there. So too was Roach. Now Platt hasn't really played that strongly in this match. We are waiting for him to be replaced. Hanley almost didn't catch that. And again, great defence. But Lewis, Wally Lewis was saying in the first half, he just doesn't seem to be able to run to this side of the field because the fin isn't anywhere near as strong. Gregory. with him. Shearer on his own. Now what can Australia do from here? Daly, Stewart, Sirenen. Sirenen running powerfully down the centre in his second half. Ward back slammed him into the ground. The Australians starting to really pick up the intensity. Lyons shows the ball one way. Flicks it out the back now. Eddinghausen did well to grab it just inside Australia's territory. Roach brings it straight down the centre again. He knows what the tactics are now. Keep the pressure on Great Britain. We're in front by four points, he says to his teammates as it comes out the Lions. Quick hands away to Belcher. Belcher brings it into Daly. Oh, what a tackle from Gregory! That was a super tackle from Andy Gregory. And if he didn't bring it off, it was try time. Stewart tries the little chip over the top. That was a forward pass. Hanley, under pressure on his own quarter line. What a great test. What a test match. Pow! Great Britain about 30 out. Now, Dixon, Gregory was in trouble after that tackle. Still a little bit shaken. And Great Britain really taken aback. Graham, they've been stunned by that unbelievable try. Well, they certainly have, Graham. I, I, I truly believe that Australia are gaining a little bit of an advantage at the moment because they're starting to play slightly wider of the ruck. In the mid first half, they were turning it inside all the time. They've now altered the play down the, down the uh, sides of the field, and I think it's paying off. Quicker play the balls from the Australians, too, and a penalty. This is going to hurt, too. They just can't get Australia down in their own territory. Elias. Lions. 
Lazarus. Very wide, Lazarus. Right on halfway. 9 6, those penalties to Great Britain. Roach. Australians desperate for another try. Lions. Line ball, that pass. Now Ward gave the treatment to Mackay, just like Surinam did in the first half. No penalty. Meninga. Incredible pace in the game. And a very tense sideline as Elias does it all right. The Australians have found a lot more variety today. Plenty of Tigers here in support, loving what Elias is doing. Now, this scrum to go down, no movement on the Australian bench. The 13 out there are playing magnificently. Gibson, upended by Lyons. Schofield. something special now they're looking for Hanley or Schofield to get him out of trouble here he is now Hanley he has got great power when he's on that left hand side of the right hand side of the field and is able to use that fin Jackson important seven or eight meters they're all important in this one Gregory a bad pass Gibson. Gibson sets up a midfield bomb. That'll be easy for Belcher. He's taken by Schofield and Hanley. They just can't get deep in Australian territory. In two or three play the balls, they will be under fire again themselves. Stewart. Stewart still going. He and Lyons have been good together. Elias, a big back line. Meninga looking for Belcher. Stops back up the middle. Lyons. Stewart. Once more they keep it alive. Shearer. Shearer down the sideline. Great cover from Jackson, the hooker. Judge, the crowd left to their feet. The touch judge was quick to get out there. Australia come off the boil as England, Great Britain get another penalty. Well, surely the penalty should have gone initially because he wouldn't let go of his feet. If he doesn't let go of his feet, he deserves to get one. The penalty would definitely have gone the other way in Australia. seem to have more say than the referee in this match. Eastwood. 46,000. Great Britain bring it ahead. 20 metres away. That seemed to be a forward pass as Dixon, who scored the try, is tackled. Only nine metres away. Played great work from Benny Elias as he raked that out the back. Not so good from Lazarus. He should have just taken the tackle. Six to go, says the referee. Obviously presuming that a Great Britain player flicked it out the back. So maybe on the blind side, the referee saw something and we shouldn't have really been critical of Lazarus. As Roach brings it ahead. and brings the ball to within 10 metres of the halfway. Lyons. Stewart. Played out by Hanson, so everyone's on side. And Meninga crashes him into Eddinghausen and he 
takes a heavy tackle just outside the quarter line. Lachlan, a crossfield, chased by Mackay, who does well. Official attendance, 46,615. And now a mistake, and that will be a scrum with an Australian feed. Well, we've seen the gates closed here in recent weeks at Old Trafford at around that number. It's just when the police decide that this ground has enough. There is a big standing room only. 48,000 capacity might be optimistic. And there it is, Schofield, not under any pressure, thinking ahead, losing the ball and putting pressure back on Great Britain. Lyons brings Meninga down the centre. Meninga straight through Hillary Hanley. Still going Meninga. What a great run from Captain Mal Meninga. And Australia now go the open side as Lyons quickly went that side, throws the dummy, brings Shearer in. Shearer, taken high. Plays it. Open side again. And there's Sheridan steaming down the centre. Pops it up. And little Ricky Stewart just couldn't handle the pass back on the inside. Otherwise, it was another Australian try. And just maybe the ball game. Pushing well in that scrum. Hanley has actually fallen on the ball in the scrum. How he got away with that, I'll never know. And now Gregory and Roach. And this is, this is his touch judge again. And he will probably blame Roach, although the referee seems to have seen it. And Gregory... it, was, it was something simple, but something that Steve should not have done. They've got them pinned down here. And there's, well, really, initially, it was Gregory punching Elias. Roach just retaliated on Elias's behalf. But a penalty that really would have hurt the Australians because they had a good chance to keep Great Britain pinned down on their own line. Ten metres Great Britain side of halfway. Ward brings it up. Great defence again from Bobby Linder, who's had another mighty game for Australia. And again, Elias rakes it free in the play the ball. Should not have done that. Well, I disagree. The Australians are arguing nobody had tackled Bob Lindner. He was entitled to get to his feet, so Hanley can't be penalised. Eastwood moving in, and he's missed it! What a shocker! And here at Old Trafford, the scores are level. It's Australia 10, Great Britain 10, 10 minutes to go in this, the second test match. The crowd are 
disappointed. He kicked the important one at Wembley. This crowd get behind their heroes again. We're in field goal time now. Gregory Schofield, they'll all be looking for one point. What a test. What a test series. They were expected, the Australians, to remain undefeated again in 1990. International Rugby League is well and truly alive. Hanley, we've got nine minutes left at Old Trafford. The Australians will be happy with a draw. That will keep the series alive. Ward, the ball went back. They're thinking about that goal kick, the bench. So's he, Malcolm Reilly. Just how close can you come? Here's a chance. Here's a big chance. It comes down midfield. Sirenen. It looks like the Australians will get the first chance at a field goal. Lazarus. I think we might have to look at putting Alexander or Des Hesler on. Well, what about the field goal now, Graham? Well, I think they'll certainly go for it. I think Elias will have... Australia, um, Penny Elias will have a crack at it soon as, soon as they get up there close. But I would certainly look at putting Alexander or Des Hazler on. Someone who can just make something out of nothing. Well, this man's made something. Elias. The bench to their feet. Stewart. Here's a great chance. Out wide. Hazler goes inside. So did Linda. So does Shearer. Daly will straight. Daly. Daly. defense. Great Britain scrambled their way. They've scrambled their way to the last tackle. Stewart. A very acute angle. It goes dead. So it's still locked together 10 all in the second dramatic test. No one has moved. Schofield. Well, Wally Lewis, what can you do? Who is the most important man out there in Australia now? Well, I think, Graham, it's, it really is up to Mel Meninga to keep everybody's head on him. He, uh, he must tell them not to panic, especially when we get up here. I think the most important man is Ben Elias, though, either end of the field. Benny's very quick out of marker. If we get out in field goal territory for Great Britain, he's obviously got to get out of that marker position as quickly as possible to put pressure on the kickers. If we're down the other end of the field, I see Benny's work at dummy half in the option position where he can he throws a very good dummy. He doesn't have to throw the, the ball back for a field goal that everybody might be expecting. Well, Great Britain might get the chance at a long-range field goal. Schofield is there. Has he got time? He's got plenty of time, but he can't meet the ball properly. It may not go dead, so Great Britain rush down there. Belcher, Schofield's got him. There's a lot of rugby league left in this test. I wish it'd go for another hour. It has been brilliant. Meninga, Meninga from his own line. Back for Daly. Australia have got to remember that a draw will suit them. A draw is enough. They don't have to play to win. Just get out of this danger area. Elias. Lindner. Good running from dummy half. Meninga's there. He throws Gregory away. Stewart. Stewart. Back for Roach. The ball's going everywhere. Knocked back by Great Britain. They cover up. And they needed to. There's five minutes to go. So here it is as Lachlan goes from dummy half. The try scorer who leveled the scores. It's 10 all here at Old Trafford. Hampson, Gregory, Betts down the centre, and Lazarus and Surinan are there to meet him. Gregory, clap. Great tackle around the legs by Gregory. Australia 10, Great Britain 10. Less than five minutes to go. Gregory, Gregory throws the dummy. we've 
Now, Wally Lewis has joined me up here. We've seen so many different interpretations on this tour. It could have easily been play on. Okay. Listen, sees Dixon did it and scored a try earlier on. Well, the Australians aren't going to complain because it's 40 metres out. It's 10 all. Elias brings Roach straight down the centre. Lovely ball away the lines. On it goes to Daly. Quick hands to Shearer. Now Shearer comes on the inside. The class of Shearer as he brings it back to almost in front of the post. Now Ricky Stewart calling for the field goal as they go to the short side. Lions. Lions held up. Only 10 metres away. Stewart is still in centre play. Centre of the field. So too is Elias as Daly just tried to score the try and put the ball on the floor. Surely the option was to use Stewart or Elias. Yeah, that's right, Darren. I've got to agree with him. Obviously, he saw an opportunity, but uh, it turned out to be the wrong option. What we had to do there was work to the centre of the field, get Benny Elias at dummy half, and Ricky Stewart in a good kicking position. We had the chance to either use Elias or Stewart for that field goal. So now it's Great Britain with the football. Three minutes left in the test match. And it's Australia 10, Great Britain 10. As Jackson's tackle. Midway half and quarter line. Inside Great Britain's territory. As Gregory runs across field. Lachlan. The work goes to Gibson. Gibson back in field. And what a tackle from Meninga. But the referees rule the pass board anyway. And so Australia will get a great opportunity to win the test match from here. Australia will get the feed into the scrum. If they keep the ball for six, it's almost like American football now. They know that a draw will at least keep the series alive. Now, surely Hanley's offside. Surely that's an Australian penalty. Stuart Hurt. Elias wants to go on with it. Right, it's got to be. We've got to work to the centre of the field. A long pass after the first drop to get to the centre of the field. A couple of rucks up the middle will give us a chance to either spread the ball wide or take that field goal option. But we can't panic. It's very dangerous if we panic from here. We'll lose it if we turn and we end up panicking. Well, how did Mackay? Two brilliant takes there. Keep the football alive for Australia. Roach, very experienced footballer. He only played one test on the last tour and it just happened him at this round and Australia won. Today, they're still level, but there's still a chance to win it. Cyril and the Lions. Lions back inside. Lions at crossfield, still going. Lions puts it open down the centre. Lions gets to within 20 metres of the line. It's on now. He's got to take the shot now while now, the defence is going back. Now, Elias has a shot, but misses. But they've soaked up 60 seconds. There's possibly only six tackles left in the football match. Very important at this stage too, David. And Ricky Stewart plays a cover defending role all the time. Australia 10, Great Britain 10. Stewart can't afford to stay in the line. He must stay behind in case of a chip kick or if a break is made by the, the Great Britain attack. And that's exactly where he is as Betts comes ahead and runs into Lazarus and also Lindner. Eight metres inside Great Britain's territory. It's Australia 10, Great Britain 10. 60 seconds left in the match as Gregory goes straight down the centre. Now Great Britain will be looking for that long-range field goal and it's Schofield who decides to kick and kick deep inside Australia's territory. Great pressure from the Great Britain attack there. Obviously it was too far out for a field goal. Now, David, I wonder how much pressure is on this referee at the moment. He hasn't uh, given a penalty away for a second-row feed the whole test match. He could very well do it here. Well, let's hope for, for Australia's sake he doesn't. Stewart appeals to the referee that he wants the scrum settled down so he can put the ball in. Good thinking. He's burning up a bit of time there as well. Smart thinker, Ricky Stewart. Crowd roars as it comes now to Lions. Lions at Crossville. Only nine metres out from his own line. Hardly any time left in this second test. Australia 10. Great Britain 10. Lions suffering from cramp. Stewart. Daly. Daly at Crossville. Football. Mackay will go on his own from here. Only 17 metres out from Australia's line. Almost no time left in the match. Stewart. Here it comes now to Linda. We're well into injury time. 40 seconds, in fact. As it comes away to Stewart again. Stewart throws the dummy. Now Ricky Stewart's on his own. He's up to the half.
Stewart, only about five minutes ago, David, was feeling like the worst man in the world after he threw that intercept pass. He's sitting on top of the world now. What a magnificent try he instigated. He got out in the open, didn't panic, and the job Melvin Inger did, as we'll see it on the replay, Mel did a little bit of work. He did a, a little bit of roller skating here. He did a bit of shoulder work, making sure that no one was going to bump him out of the way. And look at Stewart on the Just Jeans replay. It was almost Melbourne revisited. Down to the quarter line, as he got Beninga in the clear, he bumped off the would-be people in his road and scores one of the most famous tries in Test Match football. There's Ricky Min Stewart. Here's Mr Beninga's shoulder work that came in. He did plenty of running there, Mel, but his shoulder work was the, the important part that got him into the open. We'll see it again. Ricky Stewart taking stride after stride. In. There's Mel's shoulder work to get him into the clear. He did very well there. Stewart timed his purse superbly. Pass superbly, sorry. And Big Mel, there's no finer sight when he gets out in the open. Well, you scored a couple of tries on the last tour as captain. That one must really give Mel probably the biggest thrill of his career. What a day for Mel Meninga. The series stays alive until Ellen Road, because surely the siren will go after Meninga has the shot at goal. Ricky Stewart, what an incredible run. Captain Mel Meninga scores the try. Australia lead 14-10.